Let's take a look at common photo editing actions. First of all, using PowerPoint. Here's a picture I've just inserted in PowerPoint. This is a picture I had taken at some point in the past. Let's take a look and see how it comes into PowerPoint. You see it's sized exactly the same width and exactly the same height. This has an aspect ratio of four units of dimension this way to three this way. It fits a screen size of 1024 pixels by 768, a very common screen size. Now supposing I didn't want everything to appear that is currently pictured. I wanted to get rid of this car perhaps. I wanted to get rid of the left side here. I just wanted the house itself pictured for some reason. I could go over here to Format and Crop. What I can do now seems to be cutting off things on the right side, seems to be cutting off things on the top, and by moving this I can seem to be cutting things off on the left. And if I wanted to I could reduce this too, perhaps take the sidewalk out. Here's the picture. I've done some editing on it. This is the simplest type of editing. In PowerPoint, although the effect of this is to show me an image that I can now move around, that's perhaps got the content that I'm interested in, it hasn't really changed the storage dimensions of this picture. What I eliminated from the right is still really there, and if I go back into the cropping function, I can come here and I can recover it. That means that this hasn't really changed the underlying picture and the storage size hasn't changed either. So if you do this with the expectation of taking a small part out of a large photo to reduce the size of your PowerPoint slide set, it won't reduce it. This is not the way to actually do photo editing. This is just a convenience in PowerPoint and also in Word that lets you do this kind of on the fly. Now if you wanted this picture this way, you could present this and then you could press shift and print screen and this entire screen now has been captured in the clipboard. So if I get out of the PowerPoint presentation, I could, on a PC, go to a program, a very crude sort of utility program that's been provided all along in the Windows PC environment. It's called Paint. If I go into Paint, I could play around with this if I wanted to. I mean, I could draw lines here, or I could draw lines this way, but that's not what I intend to do with this. Let me just undo this and undo this. What I intend to do is edit and paste. And what I've pasted in here now is the screen that I've captured having changed the dimensions of this photo using PowerPoint. Now I really don't want all this white around here, so what I have to do is use this tool to select only what I want. Paint is very crude. It won't let you move these dimensions around very much. What's going to happen here is it's going to resize the entire image for me. That's not the point though. What I really wanted to do was to extract this and have only that be the image. Right now the image is all of the white around it, which is not really what I want as far as a picture goes. That image is selected now and I can retain it by saying Edit Copy. Now if I go to File New, I'm not going to save this. I don't want to save changes to it, but what I do want to do is to paste back in just the image that I had selected. Now if I take a look at the image and I look at its attributes. What's happening here? The image really still got all this white around, but my actions have taken the picture up to the upper left corner. So what I want to do now is to basically here, see where I've put this point? I'm marking a point on the screen that's measured in terms of pixels from the left and the top. And notice down here at the lower right, 
496, 493. That's where I've got my cursor bouncing at the moment. Remember that, 496, 493. Let's go up to Image and go to the Attributes and say 496, 493. When that's done, all the white goes away. Wherever I had placed my cursor and obtained those dimensions, in response to my change of the image attributes, Paint has limited the size of this image to the corner, and I've only got this as an image now. Now I can save it. What I want to do is save as, and I have a variety of choices of how I can save this. Some of these bitmaps, BMP, retain all the information. That's analogous to a WAV file for sound. It's very big because it records the actual color values, three values then, red, green, and blue, for each one of the pixels in this picture. It's going to be large. Varieties of other kinds of picture storage. The two modern ones that we use for the web are JPEG or PNG. And JPEG is actually still more common. If I select this, that becomes the file type. And I'm just going to put in, this is old house cropped and it's going to go into my pictures so let's save that old house cropped as a JPEG now I can end this program and I'm going to end PowerPoint 2 without saving this thing let's go over and find my pictures and here we have old house cropped now if I right mouse click and preview that's a handy way on my computer to see what the picture is. And what I'm seeing within the small black border is actually the picture that I've cropped. This is a way to crop pictures using PowerPoint, which you probably have. And if you have a PC, you already have paint. It's a way to finish up the cropping process. This two-step process is an easy way for you to crop pictures. I'm sure you have many digital pictures that you've taken either with a cell phone or with a camera. If you want to crop any of them without having to learn a photo editor, this is a handy way to do it. What I'm going to demonstrate in the next video is how this same process is done with a typical photo editor.